Because people get bored, but they don't get bored with me. Six and a half hours later. Lawyers and your carpenters and your electricians and your drivers and you're doing a lot of things. By the way, no beautiful, beautiful F-35 lightnings. Police is blowing up. Russia's blowing up with Ukraine. There's war starting all over the place. Looks like bad things could happen. And 89 percent increase in aggravated assault. Oh All right, God. that was a recent TikTok <laughs> from the Harris campaign. Its social media operation has drawn a lot of attention for its sharp and at times risky strategy against former <laughs> President Trump. The campaign's most popular TikToks have garnered 164 million views at roughly no cost. Joining us now, Bloomberg 2024 U.S. presidential election reporter Riley Ray Griffin. She is co-author of the new piece entitled How Harris's Campaign Finally Made Biden's Meme Strategy Work. And, and Riley, let's talk about the launching point. Three words. Explain to all of us how <laughs> Kamala is brat. Yeah. Yeah. Changed everything. Green. It's it's such an important question, actually, because it encapsulates this broader organic momentum that the campaign has been able to seize. That day that President Biden dropped out of the race wasn't a day that the campaign had a strategy for executing, uh, you know, memeing Harris into the Oval. Right. Ultimately, um, they had to seize that organic momentum. And Charlie XCX, a British pop star, right. had posted Kamala is brat. And you immediately saw some of those um, social media accounts seize that and make it the brand because they didn't have a brand to turn to otherwise. It was incredible to watch some of these memes and these things like her, her mother's and the coconut tree, all this stuff that I think some of the Republicans thought could be used against her actually working in her favor. The coconut on, tree. So, yeah. The coconut did, did you tree. fall out of a coconut tree? I mean, did, did, was that something that the campaign could see and seized upon or kind of fell into? Yeah, they've they've sought to take that momentum, ride the wave, but not ride it too far because right. nothing is more uncool than right. taking a meme too far. So they're right, jumping right, in, right, right. they're jumping out. Um, they are still spending a, a fair amount on their digital strategy, more than four times than the Trump campaign on Facebook and, and Google. And part of the reason why is that TikTok, um, Meta, they are downplaying political content mm -hmm. on their platforms. And right. so there's an adjusting to the algorithms here. It's a new social media landscape. And, and you really do have to, Kathy, you, you, you have to understand the social, social media landscape, also pop culture. And so while we all heard, you know, Brad, Kamala's Brad. What does that mean? What does that mean? My daughter's trying it, to explain it. It immediately <laughs> connected to our daughters. It didn't need explaining. It immediately connected they, to yeah, everybody. And I will say, you, you look at the numbers, uh, and, and Riley points this out, numbers just skyrocketed right. to followers. Yeah, and particularly, I mean, Riley, this is interesting. So are you getting data now on percentages of people that are seeing the Kamala Harris's social strategy and having a kind of, how it has a positive impact on their likelihood to vote? Because the question is for young people, is how many are actually going to turn out, right? 50% of people under the age of 30, I think it was, voted in 2020. They need to get those numbers higher if that's going to be a big part of their base. Do the memes just create a good vibe or do they actually translate into votes? That's the question. We'll see that on election day. I think it's a very difficult art to determine how the digital strategy translates into votes. But one thing that came out this week was Harvard's youth poll. And actually what they found was that about the same number of young people under 30 um, had seen hair uh, memes as Trump memes, but they were playing much better among the youth when it came to Harris. 34% um, had said it impacted them positively versus 13% yeah. for Trump. And actually, one fourth said that it impacted them negatively to see Trump memes. Uh, yeah, Sam, Sam Stein is brat. And he has the next <laughs> yeah. question. It, are, are, are you right? really? I don't think so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the kids did a poor job explaining yeah. it, I think. Uh, I, I honestly think that so much of this is uh, two things. One is that Harris, even though she was VP, 
was really not that well known. And so mm -hmm. when you have a new commodity come out and people are like introduced to that person, you instantaneously make uh, you know I ideas about them, you have perceptions about them, and then you memify them. The other thing, though, I think kind of gets underplayed is J.D. Vance. Like that right. guy came yeah. out right. and he's making fun of childless cat ladies. And God. like if there's yeah. anything that you know is perfect fodder for memes, it's cats. And so that too, I feel like added to this whole thing. But it, it is kind of interesting to watch. Maybe you could talk a bit about this. This was the strat. I mean, the Biden people mm -hmm. when it was Joe Biden, these, it's the same people, right? Like, it's not like she brought in, like, these, you know, crazed internet, you know, warlords who are going to meme a fire. Uh, but it was the same people. And, um, they tried really hard to memify Joe Biden and it just didn't work. And obviously, it's a different uh, subject matter you're dealing with here. He was simply less memeable. There's only so many uh, <laughs> yeah, things yeah, you can yeah, aviate yeah, around. Yeah, 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 ice cream and aviators. Are we memeable, Riley? I don't know. Joe's yeah, memeable. Yeah, let's try it out after this. Memeable as hell. I spent. I don't know if you like the memes. The past, <laughs> that's true. Oh my God, the memes are horrible. But uh, like past couple of years, all the young people that I spend time with, because I have two daughters, he has four. Lots of they don't. They were so done with politics. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't even want to talk about it. Yeah. And then Kamala Harris came on the scene. And I will tell you, I saw around my dinner table uh, this past summer the most engaged young mm -hmm. people I've ever seen in politics explaining to me, Brat. Um, the question is, again. Well, part of it is that she's not 80 years old. Yes. I mean, you know, everybody else is 80 years old, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so some part, or J.D. Vance. That she so. speaks in short sentences. And mm. uh, I've seen somewhere that that makes her that much more meaningful. It's really funny to watch all this shit around this table. I know, yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 You know, one thing, you, you mentioned that this was the same team. There were about 100, 200 people that That's were crazy. working out of Wilmington, Delaware, on this strategy. They were the same team that was then working on Harris. But one thing I want to note is that they are also taking a page out of the Republican, the Trump playbook here. They're a little grittier. They're a little yeah. edgier. They're being the disruptors. They're being yeah. the disruptors. They're yeah. posting pictures of Donald Trump looking old and tired. That's something that the Republican Party and right. Trump himself was doing on social media when it came to President That's Biden. True. And, and, and as we talk about what's memeable and what's not memeable, I, we can just say a 59-year-old woman who looks at times like a, a movie star on stage, the way the light's there hitting her hair and everything else, versus Donald Trump, a 78-year-old yeah. guy who's, you know... An old Donald 78. Trump, he's old, but Donald Trump is memeable. Like, he yeah. says oh, all the yeah. crazy yes. things. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. though, if you want why, why younger yeah. voters might be drawn yeah. To, yeah. to Kamala Harris. But, you know, finally, to talk finally about the, there, there's always sort of this give and take. As you uh, explained in the, in, in the article, presidential campaigns are like the most conservative, uh, like, entities ever. Mm -hmm. And you have the social media team that's constantly pushing, going, if we're conservative, we're not doing our jobs. And so it, it is sort of that back and forth, isn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it's certainly a back and forth. And one thing to consider, too, is X right now, purchased by Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. There is a different dynamic this election cycle than there was in 2020 and then in 2016. Trump advisors um, have said to me that Musk's purchase of Twitter has changed what they formerly saw a censorship of Republicans and that they're back in a dynamic where they can play better, where they can do right. more on the Internet. So a lot to see here, but there is that give and take, and both campaigns are trying to be edgy and on the attack. No. Bloomberg's Riley Ray Griffin, thank you very much for coming on the show. Great Thanks piece. so much. Thanks we'll for having me. Soon.